Yo, so we are heading over to a crazy little event right now. I'm about to go shoot an interview with this guy named Robert Shemin. He's this real estate mogul, especially in Nashville and the United States. I met this guy when we shot a little bit of a photo shoot at his place a while back, but I wanted to shoot a little bit longer form of an interview with him. It's a very simple thing. You know, you don't have to have like fancy cameras or anything like that. We have fancy cameras and things like that, but I've done interviews with just using your phone. So my purpose for this content is very well defined. I wanna connect with Robert, and I also wanna produce a piece of content that's useful for him because he has a lot of other things and he's helped me out. He's also a lawyer as well. So we're just shooting up, uh, like it was like, hey, uh, it wasn't anything fancy or just like, hey, you want to shoot an interview sometime? I had already future projected that exact thing that we wanted to do with him in the future. And now we're just kind of like logistically pinning down that, hey, you know, we're on our way to your place to actually go shoot this interview. Uh, so it'll be pretty crazy and uh, pay attention. Okay, we're about to say hi to Robert Shimon, so let's open this up. Okay. Welcome, man. How you been? Nice Good to, to see you. you. Welcome nice to back. See you. I appreciate it. Welcome. How you doing today? Good. You been a busy boy? Well, yeah, we've been kind of busy, but uh, mostly talk about exactly you know what you do and kind of showcase, hey, what crazy lifestyle you've been able to build for yourself. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know what I do, but I'm really busy. Okay. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> that, is, that is super true. I don't know about you, but if I ever think about all the things I'm doing and have to do, I'd go crazy. So uh, today's an interesting day. I woke up at, last night I was on the phone with Singapore at um, uh, 9.39, doing one of the biggest deals of my life. Okay. The uh, l largest silicon mine in the world. We're funding. I do real estate investing, write books and speak. Okay. Uh, today I did an interview with media in Europe and Israel. I'm planning a world tour in Israel and Europe and Russia, both digitally. That was this morning. Of course, I exercise at 6 uh, 30 a.m. with my trainer. Yeah, okay. He's killing me. You have a full day. You have a full week worth of work every morning. Well, no, it's only uh, 12 45. <laughs> I also went downtown with my foundation. Okay, so Robert, a lot of people don't know like, you know, you are living in this crazy mansion right now, right? Yes. But your life wasn't always like this, you know. No. <laughs> uh, this is probably something that you didn't think was possible when you first started out. And so for a guy who's watching this right now and is like, okay, this guy is superficial, this guy just has a lot of money, this guy is super rich, you know, let's talk about like what what did your life actually look like before this? Because this was not always your life, obviously. No, and uh, it's a dream uh, because I grew up uh, pretty humble, you know, nice parents. Uh, I grew up in a, like, a 900 square foot home. We had a trailer on a farm in Arkansas. And I was growing up with a poverty mentality. You know, the rich people get richer. We're not rich, we're poor. You gotta work, suffer, go to school, suffer. Get a job and suffer. If you don't like to suffer, too bad, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I moved out of my house when I was 15. But what a lot of people don't know about me is, um, I was a born pretty much dead uh, to a very humble family. I uh, couldn't walk or speak pretty much very well until I was about 10. Okay, why was that? Well, I had a bad speech impediment. I talked about, hey man, my wife might follow me all the time, so I was talking like that. <laughs> okay. It, it's kind of funny now, but it's not funny <laughs> yeah, when you're 10 or not. 10, yeah. I mean, I had no very little friends and I had braces on my legs. So imagine, you know, I know everyone's got troubles and challenges, but I mean, and, and, and everyone's like, what's wrong with this kid? He, he can't talk, he can't play sports. I mean, I have very few friends. People make fun of me all the time. Then my parents uh, hired a speech pathologist who taught me how to speak, and I won't shut up now. <laughs> They're kind of regretting that. Yeah. But uh, my parents then thought like, okay, everything's gonna be great. We got his braces off his legs. He you know, had some thick glasses. I mean, I was the you know, class loser. And uh, I started speaking, and they're like, oh, Robert's gonna do well in school, because I really didn't go to school that much. And uh, this is when I was young, and I, I started going to school, and uh, I, it got worse. Okay. I flunked like every class, uh, I got thrown out. Uh, my whole family's like, what's wrong with this kid? He's always in trouble, he can't do school. You know, I wasn't very socially adept at all. I mean, it was bad. And I, I found out when I was 18 that I had a form of dyslexia, and that's why I couldn't do well in school. So. I was worried with like just tons of negativity. It was, it was bad. And it's even worse because people are telling you like, yo, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, and like, you feel like there's something 
like physically wrong as in like somebody says something or something somebody does something and you just realize like oh that's just how other people do it but why can't i do the same thing that they're doing in the same way and it's just so frustrating because i lived with somebody who had like late level asperger's that was undiagnosed and it's the same frustration that you probably felt on a diff deeper level because it's like as a kid you don't even know that that's like there's something wrong with you yeah and, and you know our teachers family friends all saying what's wrong with him he's trouble he's no good he can't do anything and the only reason i'm alive today you only need one positive person in your life i mean like you know, i had like a hundred negative people and i deserved it i mean it was me i'm not blaming anybody but my grandmother always said don't listen to them you can do whatever you want to do you have a good personality people like you don't listen to them focus on your strengths because most people focus on their weaknesses and i was a little social i always had a pretty good attitude and uh, I never graduated high school. I lived on the streets for a year. So, I mean, people talk about living paycheck to paycheck. I literally was living like hour to hour. I mean, I had no money. I had crappy jobs. I worked in restaurants, uh, you know, 50, 80 hours a week, bus boy, you know, low end of the totem pole. And I just thought I'd always watch people have nice lives. And my family taught me that pretty much. Yeah. And um, anyway, I um, uh, eventually got into college, which is kind of interesting, without going to high school. And how did you manage that? Well, um, I got a doctor's letter okay. and I just decided certain things that I, I need to go to school. And uh, I'm not saying it's the best thing, but what happened was there's pivotal moments where things change when you meet the right person. You know, I know you've changed a lot of lives. So I met this older guy when I was 28, 29, and I was really going nowhere. I mean, at 28 and 29 years old, you were going nowhere. Nowhere. I mean, so I can't. Like, so like, like most people think that their life is over if they're 26 years old and they don't have the crazy, <laughs> the crazy lifestyle and stuff like that. I'm fortunate that I'm super young, but I feel like I started really early. And like you said, it was like, yo, uh, for you, you're I mean, 28 years old, 29 years old, and you feel like life is going nowhere. Yeah, and anyway, I met this older gentleman had no background, no education, no rich family, and he did real estate investing. And I'm like, well, I can't do that. And he's like, well, with that attitude, you can't. You gotta change your attitude first. Of course. And you know, he told me one thing that, that changed my life. He's like, whatever you think, you're right. You know, I, I thought I was a loser, you know, no going anywhere, didn't like my job, stressed out, like most people trying to pay bills. And I was always in debt, and stressed and making bad decisions and, you know, blamed everybody, blamed the government, blamed my girlfriend, blamed uh, my parents, blamed the schools. And then he told me, you got to take responsibility, start doing something. So I had that mentor, you know, he did charge me. I had to borrow money, it was a crazy uh, jump. You how, much, how much was it? 40 grand. 40 grand? Yeah, by the way. How'd you even come up with 40 grand well, as a broke 28 year old? I borrowed it from a relative and they told me, listen, you're never gonna pay this money back. You're a loser, you already owe me five grand. And, oh, and you know, the thing is, is I didn't even know that. You know, when, yeah, when things are bad, what, what, what's the difference if they go worse? Yeah. You know, I already owed money like, I could pay. What's the worst pay? thing what? that could happen? What's the worst thing that could just, happen at that point? And I, I, was, I, I didn't think I'd ever have any success. And, you know, like everyone, there's, there's a recipe for success. He did it. I didn't believe it. And you know, you won't believe it until you do it. I doubted him. I questioned him. I'm so skeptical. I tell that to people all the time. It's like, it would be more psychotic for you to think that you could do something that you haven't done than for you to not think that you can't do that thing. Right. It's, it, that would be the definition of like being psychotic as thinking that you can do something that you've never done. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense if you feel that way right now, like you, that you can't do it. Well, that's the logical conclusion to come with. But by accident, you know, I had some early success in real estate. I made some money okay. and my attitude started changing. And then I, I really got deep into other mentors who said, listen, set a goal. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. Uh, you know, you've been to Nashville. Yeah, I love and Nashville. I love Nashville too, but Nashville wasn't always exciting. It used to be a pretty sleepy town when I was growing up. Okay. And I had my rental property in Nashville and I'll never forget, I went to this mentor and he said, listen, write down your perfect day of work and play. Now, I'm in Nashville, I got my rental property, I'm, I'm hands-on, you know, I love Nashville, for where I'm from, but I wrote down that I want to be able to travel around the world, live where I want to live, have a, a place on the beach uh, and in the mountains, make like, I, back then I was making X, you know, pretty decent money after a while, but I want to make like 10X, you know. Great card on big, that. Big money, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, Grant, I know Grant, I speak with him, but I, I, I literally wrote, I want to make 10X. So let's say I was making like, you know, 15, 14 grand a month. Uh, I want to make like 150 grand a month. Okay. You know, just really go up and do Was some there tricks. any reason that you wanted the money, right? Because like you had some money coming in, but what did that money actually accomplish you in terms of your lifestyle? Like what was the difference? Because well, I feel like some people, they get trapped in like the, the lawyer doctor route where they maximize life for money. 
and in doing so they lose the connections they lose health they, health, they lose their family lose their, their relationship and they have this long-term misalignment where it's not a big deal when you're young to have that type of uh, determination but you know as you gain more money in those types of jobs you end up with more responsibility not less responsibility it's not like with real estate for example you have that longer term alignment because actually as you gain more money and you get that status you actually gain that time and freedom to do what you want and to find your own life. I'd actually done that where I worked so hard I almost lost everything you know it was ridiculous just for the money that doesn't work I tried that yeah. you're right on but at this point I'm like I really want to take my life to a higher level I want to give back help people travel be completely free not ever have to worry about money you know when you're making 12 15 grand a month you know it's good I was living well but I wasn't like I still had to think about money yeah I want to be like I don't want to think about money if I want to do something let's do it but more emotionally uh, spiritually free, give back, make a big impact, travel in better circles, travel around the world and, and study healing and, and spiritual matters and helping people. But here's the point on a practical level. And uh, I did this with one of my mentors. Uh, and everyone should do it. What, you know, not just money, but perfect day of work and play. Like, how do you want to enjoy yourself? So I wrote all this great stuff down and I made the big mistake. I went home to have a family dinner and my family's like, so what are you doing? You do another one of those stupid seminars, mentoring things? I'm like, yeah. And like, well, my brother and dad were like, I love them, but they're like yeah. really skeptical. Yeah, yeah. And pretty I heartful. feel like most successful people aren't that skeptical. Correct. My family is. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe your friends are. And I made a big mistake. I'll never forget this. Because we all are affected by people around us. And I love my family. I'm like, so Robert, do tell us what you did in this mentoring session. You know, how to get to that. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, well, I want to get the next level. You know, yeah. I'm doing well, but I went to the next level. I got this great mentor to get me there. And I really love him and great advice. And he made us do this exercise. Like, do share. And I'm at the dinner table going, well, I'm going to live by the water. My dad and brother fall off their chairs laughing. They're like, you're from Tennessee. You're real business at Nashville. You are never leaving Nashville. You can't leave your business. It'll crumble. And we don't have a beach unless we sink Georgia. That's the <laughs> yeah. stupidest thing I ever heard. But I'm like, okay. Next one, please do share. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know why I did this torture, you know, masochistic exercise yeah, with my like, family and friends. And then they're like, I want to make 10x in like 18 months. And my dad is like, listen, I'm a logical businessman. Business go up 5, 10, 20% a year in a great year. They don't go 10 times. You're out of your mind. That will never happen. Give it up. You're, you're, these are false dreams. And I went home and I was like, oh no. <laughs> and they're crying. Even me at that level, I'm like yeah. affected. You're affected by people around you. Yeah. And I bought Especially your family, not, not because you care what they think, but because they're important to you. Too. I was flying so high for this mentoring and I'd had some success and I just, they just crashed me. And I'll never forget, I crumpled the paper and just threw it somewhere. I'm like, oh, this is stupid. They're right. I'm going back to the logical world. And literally about 18 months later, I'm moving into a penthouse in South Beach in Portofino. Uh, little Wayne shares the floor with me. Okay. I'm living in Costa Rica, traveled all over Latin America. My business is up like, you know, 14X. Yeah. You know, I did some books and speaking. I'm hanging out in these amazing circles with like the coolest people, you know, women I would have never ever t even looked at, yeah. let alone talked to when I was like, you know, in my earlier, because I had no self-esteem. Yeah. And I'm like, how did this happen? And I'll never forget, I, in the movers, I opened my drawer and I, I saw those pieces of paper. And everything I'd written on there had literally come true. Even though I didn't believe it, and my family certainly helped me not believe it. Yeah. And the point is, is you have to get started. Don't put it off. I put it off for a long time. I was a late bloomer. But I mean, you're 28 and you still had the ability to transform your life, no matter what the spot that you were in right then. Like I don't care whether you're 50s, 13, it's a decision. That's all it is. And it took me a long time. It's I'm like a commitment. Everyone's interested, yeah. but the reason why people don't actually, everyone's interested in building a better life, but a lot of people end up not doing that because yep. they're afraid, they don't know how to do it, they are a hard worker, or they don't have the right steps in front of them, and they haven't met the right person to actually show them exactly what that type of step-by-step -step path looks like. Like you could have worked 10 times harder, right? But the person that you met actually gave you the ability to step in and yeah. execute on a system that was actually reproducible. You always have to do the work, you know, exercise, Obviously. music, Obviously. you know, but you, I'm working so much smarter now. But there are so many people that do the work, but that still doesn't lead them to the lifestyle that they want. And that, and I feel like you were a guy who, you were working super hard. You felt like the world just didn't understand you because you had this, this, these whack mindsets that your family had instilled in you that, you know, you hadn't even had a glimpse of what that other reality looked like until you met your mentor. And I'll make it real simple. When I was, you know, 14 to 20 something, 
I'm, I'm from Memphis originally, Nashville, and I was a bad boy. I don't know if you were a good okay. or bad boy. Bad. <laughs> I, was a, I was a pretty good boy. I was a bad boy. I mean, all my friends were, were, were partying, drinking beer. We were broke. We had bad mentality. We blamed everybody. And the change you got to make is, I don't care whether you get a mentor or find somebody, it's the people you're around. Because the biggest fear should be is not changing. You know, people are scared to make a move or get a better job or learn something or do something new. I was. I was scared to do my first real estate deal, scared to get a mentor, scared to borrow the money. I had massive fear. But the real fear is staying the same because my life was miserable. And my friends' lives, they were cool. They're still my friends. You know, we grew up together. But I tell you, if you're around a lot of beer drinkers, you're probably going to drink more beer. And if you're around a lot of cool people like we are now, traveling, I mean, everyone every we meet is like, oh, yeah, I was just in Indonesia. I'm going to the Philippines. So it's so weird to meet people that are back week. on those lower vibes. It's so weird to talk to those people after being outside of that, that reality for so long. Like, for example, what we were talking about right when we were having uh, lunch here, we were saying, like, yo, talking to people from corporate America is so much different than, like, the lifestyle that we have because they just think it's superficial. They just want to judge you about it. They think that you're, like, a greedy person. But in reality, if they just kind of went from a spot of, like, yo, because if they accepted that, then they'd have to accept that their reality is somewhat flawed. I mean, we're, we're feeding thousands of street kids here every day. That's why I do real estate now. To for charities and foundations, you know? And there's nothing wrong with living well, correct? I and agree with I live you. very well, and you do too, but you know, the, what, what's, everyone's different. You know, our, my first thing to make money is I get a little house and get a little car, that's nice. And then my real motivation was to get a vacation because I like free time. And I was working, you know, 70 hours a week. My, no one in my family ever took two weeks vacation. By the way, my family still thinks I'm insane. They're like, get a job. <laughs> you know? I had that stuff happen to me at Christmas every year, man. Yeah. It's like if I even went back to college, I would make less money. I would not do the cool things. I would not have the impact that I want. And it would have no alignment in my life. And it's just like, it's like talking to people who are brainwashed. And I haven't yeah. been in college for five years. And it's like they still want to recite the same thing yeah. over and over to you, no matter what success you end up getting. And I'll tell you a real quick funny story. Whatever you do, not people, that we don't love our families, yeah, to say the least. I'll never forget, um, I had just spoken to like 40,000 people in, um, the, the, um, in New York at the Javits Center, or 50,000 people at, um, in San Francisco at Moscone Center, you know, with Tony Robbins and Kiyosaki, and I was going to see this big group, and I was just killing it, you know, with books and real estate and speaking. And um, I go home. My mother, I don't know if you have this in your family, says, we need to talk. And in our room, in our house, uh, in Nashville, there was a room you never went into unless there was a problem. Was okay, I've never, I've never had that. But we always had, had our that. family. I was, we had to go in the living room and talk, and I go, oh my God, this is bad. You know, my, is my dad sick? Is my brother in the hospital? Is yeah. my sister, you know? And I go, what's the problem? Because I'm, I'm living large. I'm living yeah. the life. I'm so happy. And he goes, well, Robert, we had a family meeting, and it's you. Now, remember, I was in trouble before when I did nothing, and now I'm being really successful. I'm like, what's the problem with me? And they go, well, we've been talking. I feel like these are like complete, uh, it's like mind blowing because people think that the success makes those problems go away. But no. in reality, it's their mentality, it's yeah. their reality. You got to create your own reality. You can't change the people no. that, you can't change the mentalities of the people that are around you. You can just change your reality and the people who are around you. Yeah. And, and you know, this lifestyle, Lee, now, like, it was my son and I sit around and, like, we have nothing to do for weeks. We're like, where do you want to go? You want to go back to Europe? You want to go to Spain? No, we just went there. You want to go to Israel? You want to go down to South America? Yeah, well, we always like Colombia. You want to hang out in Miami and go on the boat? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I'm listening to these conversations. Like, how did I get in this conversation? Because my conversation used to be like, hey, let's put two bucks in and we get a Subway sandwich and split it five ways. Maybe. You know, <laughs> like, that's why I grew up. And I'm sitting there listening sometimes going, how did I get this? Yeah. But you just do it and you meet the right people. But here's the point. My mother and my dad and brother and sister at the time were like going, we have, we have a problem. You don't have a job. Uh, we don't know why you speak to all these people. We saw it. They saw me speak to this huge crowd. They go, certainly you don't have health insurance because if you don't have a job, how can yeah. you have health insurance and yeah. benefits? Yeah. And we know you're miserable. <laughs> we know you're miserable. Yeah. Why do they how say that? Miserable because you don't have a job. You're unemployed. unemployed. And I'm thinking too. like, I'm thinking like, but people think like that. That's yeah. how bad it was. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, first of all, the reason I speak is because I like it. And they go, they pay me. And my mom's like, they pay you to do that? I'm like, yes. And you probably get paid pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> and the re yes. Yeah, some of these events were gross, you know, five to $15 million a weekend. Now that was the gross, yeah. I, you know, it wasn't, wasn't all mine, but of it's insane. Not. You know, it's insane. Anyway, 
you know, and we're selling courses and education and helping people. But anyway, the point was I told my mom and dad, I'm like, well, first of all, I do it because I like it. And second of all, they pay me. And third of all, I like to travel. If I don't want to travel, I don't. And fourth of all, I don't need an office. I have health insurance for 200 bucks a month. I got the best health insurance ever. Yeah. You know? And, but the, the point is, it's mentality. They were brought up that success meant you have an office, you have a job you go to, and you got some security and benefits. And for some people, that's great. I don't judge anybody. But to me, I'd rather uh, clean your bathrooms you know, every day than sit in a cubicle. Um, that, is, that is very true. And you can go out there. I don't care who you are or what you are. You can make money if you want to make money. There's so many ways to make money on the internet, Amazon, real estate, I mean, um, consulting, virtual. But people think they're trapped. And you're not trapped. But the second thing is you've got to change your mentality. And until I really envision how I want to live, other people have a vision for you. So to get from point A to point B, I don't care where you're from. And I've met billionaires, millionaires, rock stars who their stories are like so crazy. But here's the difference. Number one is they made a decision. It's a decision. I want to change something. They have to go all in. You have to make a commitment. Right. And the only reason I made a decision, like most people, which is so stupid, is because my life was so painful. <laughs> most people will not make a decision until the pain gets greater than the decision to make a decision. And I, I mean, I was broke, miserable. I had no decent girlfriend. I had crappy cars. I, I just, I knew my life was miserable. And it was getting pain, more painful by the week. And I just said, I, I got to do something. What's the risk of, of trying something? The real risk is sticking the same. I'm, you know, I looked at my you friend. You would have lived that life for the next 20 years. Yeah. That would have been way more painful than losing $40,000 to you. Yeah. And, and I go back and I mean, there's like a, a decision. And, and the hardest decision, and I, and I think this is for me and for a lot of people, it's the hardest decision to make, you think, but it's actually the easiest. It's called letting go. Letting go. It's called getting out of your freaking head. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you. And this is what I want to be able to offer you now. If you look down below, click that link in my bio and actually book a free one-on-one -on -one call either with me personally or one of my expert coaches. And on that call, we're gonna ask you a little bit more about your situation, see, hey, can we actually help you in the first place? And because of that, our time slots fill up very quickly. Our services are in very high demand and because these calls are free, I also only have 24 hours in my day as well. So these kind of fill up very, very quickly. If you just kind of like the idea of challenging the status quo, if you like the idea of being able to make life-changing connections with people who are definitionally exactly where you want to be, surrounding yourself with like-minded people, so you can kind of leave that kind of toxic caged feeling behind, then this call is for you. And you know, there's really no downside to this call. It's 100% for free, even if you're international. And if you actually want to start your journey and actually building your own elite lifestyle, never procrastinate, click that call, and I will talk to you very soon. Huge thanks to Pat and all of his coaches. They've guided me from being very, very lonely, um, overworked, having left school, um, not really knowing what I want out of life. Pat and the coaches have essentially helped me sort of like narrow down and, and clear that fog of, of what I expect out of my social life and have taught me the skills to communicate, you know, with, with entrepreneurs, with business owners, photographers, models, just like high performing people. Um, I'm originally like a very shy and awkward guy. Now, like seven days a week, if I wanted to go out uh, shoot for an event. I could definitely do that. I have the I have the option now to do so. If you are someone that wants to challenge the status quo, book that call because Pat and the coaches will definitely definitely help you create a social circle that fulfills you, that is joyful, authentic, and just allows you to become your best self.